This is Mac OS Ken. Tons of talk around Apple's anticipated headset. Apple may drop new beats today. And COVID notifications fade into the past. It is Wednesday, the 17th of May, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Use code MacOSCAN50 at factormeals.com slash MacOSCAN50 for 50% off your first box. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon, Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. It would be incorrect to say that Apple has opened the floodgates on its AR VR headset plans, but the Cupertino company may have turned up the gain on the chatter. Sources as wide-ranging as the Wall Street Journal, the guy who founded Oculus, and some guy I know all hit toward the end of last week or over the weekend with such chatter. The report from the Wall Street Journal was long and strong and down to get the headset talk on. Boiling it down to almost nothing, the journal subheader said, Apple's soon-to-be-revealed mixed-reality device will likely cost $3,000, requires a separate battery pack, and is still experimental. That separate battery pack thing is still hard to believe. At the same time, we're hearing it so much, it's kind of slipping into the realm of totally accepted. I'm really hoping everybody is wrong about that, but we'll see. Whittling away at expectations from the journal piece, the device will be shown off at WWDC, according to the paper. Adoption is expected to be slow compared to iPhone and Apple Watch, Most people going for round one of the device won't get it until the fall at the earliest. It is expected to cost around $3,000. And the battery pack is a concession Apple is making because it wants into the market now, not when it has the device perfected. While it's not naysaying exactly, the report does not paint an easy picture for Apple's headset. And yet, in the midst of all of it, the journal wrote... In Apple's history, the company has defied skeptics with how swiftly consumers adopted most of its products. The market for digital music players before the iPod was small. Smartphones were still clunky with physical keyboards before the iPhone. Before the Apple Watch, wearables were a nascent category with limited appeal to people outside of the tech industry. In each of those categories, Apple's entry vastly expanded the markets. So then the question is, will Apple be able to make enough of the things? The journal has TF International analyst Ming-Chi Kuo indicating that the numbers will be way low for this year, 200,000 to 300,000 units in his estimation. That is due to manufacturing delays, according to people said to know something about something. I'm sorry to editorialize, but I've been talking about Apple's anticipated AR, VR, MR, XR offering for at least a year and a half, if not longer, at this point. To my way of thinking, one of the greatest strengths Apple's headset has always had is Apple's active developer community. If you build it, they will build for it, as they did for iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch at least in the beginning. Thinking along a related line, the journal says supporting a developer ecosystem will be key to the success or failure of the headset since wearers will need worlds to download and immerse themselves into. By announcing it at the developer conference in June, Apple would be signaling it once the event to kickstart developer interest for making headset content. Gee, you think... As for the other two mentions I mentioned, a friend who I trust, Silicon Valley adjacent, somebody I know to be connected, though I don't know what their connections are, they wrote to me last week saying, some insights on Apple headset. My sources tell me it'll be great for colleges and embraced in year one, 
mostly an industrial tool for creating visuals like city planning, video game immersion, movie sets, architects, engineers. Not going to be a smash hit out of the gate, which is good, as purpose is still open to be defined. USC Film School and even some high schools are making augmented and virtual curriculum, and nothing fills that hole. And the other mention, the stepfather of VR as it stands today made a cryptic, though way positive-sounding comment about Apple's mixed reality headset over the weekend. Apple Insider had Oculus founder Palmer Lucky posting one sentence about Apple's much-anticipated device on Sunday. In case those names mean nothing to you, the bees explains, as the founder of Oculus, Lucky had a hand in forming the current state of VR headset technology before the company was bought by Facebook in 2014. I used an Oculus Rift for a while. Personally, I found it clunky, partly because it had to be connected to a computer, and partly because the computer it had to be connected to was a Windows machine. That said, I had some truly immersive and mind-blowing moments with the Oculus Rift. And what does the guy who made that have to say about Apple's AR, VR thing? In a very short post on Twitter, Lucky said simply, The Apple headset is so good. Apple Insider points out the lack of extra detail and the brief message itself doesn't necessarily mean that Lucky actually got hands-on time with the headset, nor does it confirm that he was directly informed or saw the capabilities of the headset. However, his previous history in the field gives his words gravitas. Sounds like controlled leaks, doesn't it? Don't say you heard it from me, but say you heard it kind of stuff. Info kept rolling as the week began. On Monday, TF International Analyst Ming-Chi Kuo took to Medium with his latest takes. Running down some of those, he thinks the thing will be demoed at WWDC and that Apple is well prepared for the announcement of this new device. He thinks companies in the headset supply chain will make bank. And he thinks the headset device will soon become the most important new investment trend in the consumer electronics sector if Apple's ARMR headset announcement is better than expected. It's hard to tell from that whether he means that statement for headsets in general or for components meant for Apple's device specifically. The report earlier from the Wall Street Journal said some in tech expect Apple's headset to lift the entire market for metaverse products. Now, if you want more than hints and hopes around an Apple headset announcement, stop reading the tea leaves and start reading trademark filings. Apple Insider has found four, two in New Zealand and two in Singapore, each pointing to Apple's mixed reality future. XROS has been one of the rumored names for Apple's operating system tied to its anticipated ARVR device. According to the Apple Insider piece, an LLC thought to be a shell company for Apple has filed for trademarks covering lowercase XR, uppercase OS, and XROS all caps in the aforementioned countries. All four applications show as pending in both Singapore and New Zealand. And now, we wait, as at least some of us have for the past year and a half or more. Apple's headset is expected to be the centerpiece of this year's Worldwide Developer Conference keynote. WWDC kicks off on Monday, the 5th of June. More news in a moment, but first a word from Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and sponsor of today's show. We are rolling into summer. It's getting warmer. There's more to do outside. Not a lot more time, though. How much of that do you want to spend in the kitchen? With Factor, you'll save time, eat well, 
and get to the things you want to do. Factor offers delicious options every week to fit a variety of lifestyles. That's keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, protein plus. A lifetime of microwave meals may leave you skeptical about that delicious part. Well, let me tell you, the Factor meals I have had have been truly delicious. I don't know why their chicken tastes better than my chicken, but it does. The sauce on the Parmesan chicken I had was rich and delicious, while the chicken itself was tender and tasty. Factor is cheaper than takeout and super quick. Ten minutes in the oven or two minutes in the microwave, and you are eating so well. Head to factormeals.com slash macOSCan50 and use code macOSCan50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code macOSCan50 at factormeals.com slash macOSCan50 to get 50% off your first box. See what's made Factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Get 50% off your first box with code macOSCan50 at factormeals.com slash macOSCan50. Apple may have new hardware out today. Remember those transparent Beats Studio Buds Plus we talked about a few weeks back? The ones that appeared on and disappeared from Amazon at the end of April? They made another surprise appearance over the weekend. On Saturday, a piece from Mac Rumor said a box of the stoppers had turned up at a Best Buy. The piece pointed out that Beats had not yet announced the new earbuds, though they may have done so by the time you hear this. A separate piece from Mac Rumors spotted a teaser tweet from Beats on Tuesday that had a stylized video of what appeared to be a translucent case for a pair of earbuds. It also had the words, Tomorrow at 7 a.m. PT. It had those words yesterday. So, you know, new Beats Studio Buds Plus seem likely to make the scene this morning. If you're on the fence about the Apple TV soccer thing, you can take a free month to get to know it better. Engadget ran a piece over the weekend saying there is a one-month free trial of MLS Season Pass on Apple TV available now. According to the offer site, the deal is valid only where MLS Season Pass monthly subscription is available. It's open to new and qualified returning subscribers. It requires an Apple ID with payment method on file. And MLS Season Pass will kick into monthly billing once the free month is over, though the end gadget piece says you can cancel before the free month ends and not be billed. Of course, you can also cancel after the free month to stop billing whenever you want. Now, I'm kind of curious who's behind this. I assumed it was Apple, though the fine print on the offer site says... Apple is not a sponsor of this promotion. I guess it's Major League Soccer, then. If you're thinking, well, that all sounds great, but I don't have an Apple TV, think again. And Gadget reminds readers you can also install the Apple TV app on Roku devices, PlayStation and Xbox consoles, Chromecast, Amazon Fire devices, Android TV, cable streaming boxes, including those from Comcast and Verizon, and smart TVs from Samsung, Vizio, Sony, LG, and Panasonic. It's also on iPhones, iPads, Macs, and, yes, Apple TV devices as well. And finally today, late January 2020 was the first time I mentioned coronavirus on this show wasn't even called COVID-19 then, I don't think. Well, you probably got the notification I'm going to tell you about. It would feel weird to have it pass without mention. On Thursday evening, set a piece Friday from 9 to 5 Mac, 
iPhone users around the U.S. began receiving push notifications on their devices, saying that their health authority had turned off exposure notification support. Your iPhone is no longer logging nearby devices and will not be able to notify you of possible exposures, Apple said to those users. Now, those messages went up and out on the same day that the U.S. declared an end to the COVID-19 public health emergency. It's unclear if this change is directly tied to the end of the COVID-19 public health emergency, according to 9to5Mac, but it'd be kind of coincidental if it wasn't, wouldn't it? They were turned on on a state-by-state basis. I guess it's possible they're being turned off that way as well. While the Apple Google contact tracing app did not get the level of adoption for which the companies might have hoped, 9to5Mac says, From a pure engineering and technological standpoint, the exposure notifications technology was incredibly impressive. Watching Apple and Google team up to develop the system in the early days of the pandemic in 2020 was incredibly inspiring. I gotta say, it feels like more happened in the two days I missed this week than in the full week I was away in April. Not complaining, just explaining. We'll see what we can do about catching up as the week goes on. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal kit. Use code MacOSCAN50 at factormeals.com slash MacOSCAN50 for 50% off your first box. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash MacOSCAN. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time... That is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.